So now that we have our camera shot, let's create some lights and do some test renders. So to create lights, you may have guessed, again, very logical, we can find any creation tools from our Create menu. So now I'll navigate down to Lights, and I'll come over to Point Light. Uh, we're going to use a point light. There's several different types of lights found within Maya. Uh, the point light is a good introductory light uh, to the attributes that we can modify within Maya. So when I create a light, you can see it creates a, a point light gizmo in the screen and it always defaults to the origin of my grid. So I'll just move this up initially on the Y axis by using my move tool. Uh, again, we can na access our move tool by hitting W on the keyboard and then we can move that by left mouse clicking on the Y axis and moving that up. So there's the little gizmo that we'll be able to uh, emit light from, almost like a light bulb you could think of it. So to see kind of how this light's going to look before we do a test render, uh, we can turn on our lighting mode within our viewport. And that's just found on the panel toolbar. It's the icon right beyond the texture bar. And now we can see lights in the scene. Now again, this representation is not going to be very accurate to the final quality, but it will help us get an idea. And that will speed up the process so we don't have to do as many test renders. So I'm going to come over to the attribute editor now and with my light selected, look for the point light shape attribute. So this will give us the attributes to our light. So just like we edited the material attributes, now before I do any editing, let's uh, create a test render to see how this light affected the scene. So I'll create a new render, and now you can see that with a light, we're starting to get a little bit better quality already. We just have one light in the lower left-hand corner of my logo. So now let's start adjusting some of the light settings. Uh, the main settings to um, pay attention to would be the color of the light. So, uh, for example, we can have a light that emits red colors, yellow colors, blue colors, or a clean white light. We can adjust the intensity of the light, the emission point, and we can adjust the decay rate. And here I'd recommend turning on decay of linear or quadratic uh, based on the scale of the scene. What this does is it um, allows light to die off the further we get away from the source. And that's true to the real world. Um, light does not go on for infinity, which if no decay is turned on, that's what's happening. Light is just uh, continually emitting for infinity. By turning on decay, we'll have a hot spot, and then light gradually dies off the further we get away from the light source. So think of uh, a lamp in a dark room. The light is the brightest, closest to the lamp, but slowly it fades away as we get further and further from the light source. The next setting that we could play around with is found in the Shadows drop-down. Uh, I'm going to turn on Depth Map Shadows, so be sure to turn on that setting, uh, and that way we'll emit shadows on our object. So now that we've turned on Decay and we've turned on Shadows, let's take another test render to see how this looks. Okay, so see how we have a hot spot with our light in the lower left hand corner. The light gets softer the further we get away. And we're also creating some nice shadows here in the scene. Now to soften these shadows, we can also use something called filter. Uh, this is much like a, a Gaussian blur found in Photoshop. It's going to filter or blur the edges of our shadow. So anywhere from three to five is a good filter setting to give nice soft shadows. So I'll store this image and take a new rendering. And here you can see how we get nice soft shadows by introducing some filter to our uh, shadow attribute. Now I'm going to start off by having my light right in the center of the logo. So in my top view, I'm going to move my light to make sure it's right uh, smack in the middle of the I, the heart, the 3, and the D. And this is just going to put a hot spot right on the floor in the center. And that'll help draw the attention from the viewer to my logo. If I take another test render, See how that just emits the light and you can see that the hottest color is there in the center around the logo. So that's just a good practice to uh, draw the attention from the viewer. Also all the shadows are kind of emitting away from that source, so creating some nice drop shadows there. So I'll keep that image. And at this point you can do the same. So uh, now go ahead and create a point light in your scene. Remember from the creation menu we can go to lights, point light and play with the settings. Play with the color, the intensity, the decay. Uh, also um, turn on shadows and turn shadows off to see the difference between how shadows affect the scene. So play around with the light and find where you'd like the primary light for your logo and then we'll resume with the project. 
Alright, so now that I have my first initial light, I can begin duplicating my light and creating a, a three-point lighting scenario. Um, and really that's just a technique to light all areas of my logo. Now really this process is a trial and error. Uh, there's some theory to three-point lighting, but overall it's whatever looks best at the end of the day. So feel free to experiment. And if you have lighting backgrounds or a lighting experience, you'll probably feel very at home working in this 3D package and playing with lights. If not, just feel free to explore and you'll have a lot of fun playing with the lights and the colors and seeing how that affects the final render. Now for the light right in the center, I'm going to uh, give this just a nice cool color. So I'm going to change the hue to uh, blues and I'll give this just a tinge of blue. And if we take a look at the render, you'll see how this will just introduce a nice cool color to the overall scene. Now one thing, uh, I can see my background is just the default um, gray Lambert material. I'm going to take my background floor at this time and assign a new material, assign a Lambert. And here's where we could have fun as well. We could have a white background, we could have a black background, we could have red backgrounds, and we could explore with different um, things. But I'm just going to start with a nice dark background so that the color of my white logo and the orange really contrast and pop off of the background. So let me just pull that back up and see how that uh, dark gray material works. You can see that that really makes the logo pop quite a bit more than what we had just a moment ago. All right, so now let's create a few more lights. I'm going to keep this image. Now, once we've taken the time to set up one light, we don't have to repeat that procedure from scratch. Uh, rather, we could just duplicate the initial light. So with my light selected, I can go over to Edit and down to Duplicate. Also notice that the hotkey is Control-D on the keyboard. So if you're trying to remember your hotkeys, uh, you could use Control-D to speed up that process. All right, so we've duplicated the light. I'm going to use my move tool hitting W on the keyboard and in my top view I'll move this light to the lower left hand corner uh, of my logo and then in my perspective view if I navigate around I could see where that where that is I'll also zoom in in my front view and get this a little bit closer to the logo and with this light I'm going to turn down the intensity and again we can look in our perspective view and our, in our camera view so before we even test render get kind of an idea how this will look so I'm just trying to create this light a bit softer so that it doesn't overpower uh, the main light that I have in the center but at least it'll light up this lower corner because currently you can see that this corner uh, really doesn't have any lighting so far um, and then just to contrast the center cool color I'll start to give this a warm color. So I'll switch over to an orange. And as we're playing with the software, we're also talking about color theory, lighting theory, uh, three-point lighting. So we're talking about a few techniques um, to get the best lighting solution for our render. Okay, so we have our second light. Let's go ahead and create a render. All right, so see how that lights up those darker areas down below the logo. And in this case, I'd recommend maybe even uh, toning down that intensity even more so it doesn't fight too much. We want to light up those areas but we don't want it to overpower the main light that we have. So you can see that's a little bit softer there. I like that. Now one thing as we start introducing new lights is we can decide some lights we may want shadows, uh, some lights we may want to turn shadows off. So for example if I keep this image and render again without shadows, let's compare. So here you can see that my primary light has shadows in this render but not my secondary and in this case the secondary light also have shadows so we do want to be careful we don't want every light to have shadows on otherwise we'll have shadows everywhere and that may be distracting so this will be up to your own personal taste um, do some test renders in this case I'd say it would look good to not have shadows on with this secondary light so I'm gonna keep shadows turned off for my secondary light in the scene so now we just need to light up the other dark areas. So if I look around, you can see that this right corner, bottom corner, is pretty dark. So we could try lighting that up as well. So I'm going to minimize my render, select my second point light, and in my top view, I could just hit Control D. Remember, Control D is the hotkey to duplicate a light. And then with my Move tool, remember that's the hotkey W, um, I'll take the move and I'll move my point light, my new point light, off to the right hand side. Now it's good just to give some variation so that um, things don't look too symmetrical. So I don't want this to be uh, directly over, so I'm just moving it down a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll move it closer to the logo or closer to the floor. Um, again, just to give some variety. So having some of that spontaneity will really enhance your render. 
So as I render again, you can see a bit of a hot spot here. I'm going to get this a little closer to the floor because I want to, um, in this case, maybe create a nice hot spot on the floor right there. So again, this is really up to your artistic design um, and uh, what you think would look good with this render. I'm going to take this color and again, I'll change the color a little bit. I'll just warm this color up a bit more. All right, so you can see a nice yellow hot spot coming in down here. We have orange, we have kind of a blue, very subtle, but it gives a lot of color variation because if we go back, look at what we originally had with just a white light. So here's what a white light does, and then when we add uh, multiple colors, see how it just gives a nice studio lighting look and feel? All right, I'll keep that image, and uh, just quickly to round off this stage of our project, I'm going to duplicate this light once more, put one in the upper right-hand corner, and this light, I'm going to try and get um, a nice red color bouncing off the, the scene or the floor here. So I'm going to give a pretty intense red. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because I have that heart. So uh, what I'm hoping to do is get a nice red color bleeding on the floor here. And if I take a test render here, it looks like we need maybe a little bit more intensity with that color. So I'll uh, ramp up that color intensity a little bit more. Render once again. All right, so you can see some of those red tinges starting to come in here. Um, I'll move this light down a little closer to the logo. All right, so see those red colors starting to be represented. So um, just, again, play with this, do some test renders, see how it's looking. And there we go, I'm getting some nice color bleeding. So see that red uh, starting to come uh, present on the floor that we didn't see before. So we're introducing some nice reds to the scene uh, to tie in nicely with that heart. So I'll apply that one, and then we'll just create one more cool color up in this corner, and then we'll call this stage good. So I'll duplicate. I'll move over for the eye. Move this up. Let me move this one, this red one, over just a bit. And then for this last cool color, I'll introduce a cooler color once more. Bit of a blue. And so I'm just trying to balance having warm colors on one side, cool colors on the other. Uh, a hot spot, the brightest light is in the middle. So we're overall lighting up our logo from every direction. Um, but the hotspot, our eye, uh, is drawn to the center of our logo. So at this point, I'll keep this image, and we'll go ahead and round off this section, uh, stage three, camera and lighting. And now we're ready for the final polishing and the special effects to really take this render from mediocre to a nice professional quality look. So just to recap what we produced in this stage, we uh, created a background plane for our scene. That way we're able to adjust the colors of our background. Uh, we then rotated our scene, so in my case, the logo is laying on the floor. Uh, we created a camera by using the Create Camera tool, and then we assigned our side view to look through the camera. That way we have our camera and also our 3D perspective view. Once we had set up our camera view and locked that in, we then played around with creating lights and seeing how light attributes um, affect the overall look and feel, the dynamic of the logo. So now that we have a good lighting approach, uh, we have things figured out, uh, we can move into the next step of the polishing and the special effects to take this render to that professional quality look. So at this time, don't forget to save your scene. We just finished another sta uh, stage of the project. So at this point, we completed the third stage of the project and we worked on the lighting phase of the project. So go ahead and save. So once you've completed your lighting, you've played with that, uh, and you're ready for stage four, we'll then get in to our special effects.